Namaste everyone and welcome back to Live Stronger. Today we are going to work on our back strength and some bicep work also. So straight away I am going to start with the greatest stretch. 5 repetitions on each side to unlock my entire body's mobility. Make sure you stretch your leg as, as far behind as possible to get that inner thigh stretch and glute activation. Go down as much as possible and then rotate, hold for 4 to 5 seconds. That's more than sufficient. Feel the stretch traveling throughout from your toes till your shoulders throughout your body. This ensures that we unlock our mobility properly for our workouts. One of the greatest stretches. I really like it. So post completing my greatest stretch. I move on to my deep squat, the mandatory deep squat for the day. Make sure you push your glutes as far behind as possible. And once your hamstrings are stretched, start bending your knees, go into the deep squat and stay there for a few seconds. Feel the stretch traveling inside your inner thighs and feel your glutes contract really hard as you start getting up slowly. And that's it. Post completing my stretches, I move on to my warm-up or the mobility drill, Y and W races. Basically, get onto an inclined bench at 45 degrees, take two lightweight dumbbells, not something which is very heavy, and start raising your arms in shape of a Y, the top part of a Y. You are the stem and the hands become the two branches coming out. This totally engages our entire back. You should immediately start feeling the contractions in your spinal muscles. Along with it, you can also do the W races. Basically, you bend your elbows a little bit, get them into 90 degrees and then start doing the raises like a delt race, ray delt race. But here your back will still be a lot activated. These two particular exercises i do like them they can be done as a exercise itself with number of sets but i like to do them as a mobility drill or a warm-up drill to start engaging all of my back muscles and get them ready for working sets make sure you go through the movement really slow hold the uh, you know the contraction points for at least a second or two to feel the muscles activate post completing these I have done two sets of pull-ups. Now I have done one close grip and one medium grip. Both the times I tried to get as many repetitions as possible. I was able to get 8 to 10 repetitions. So post completing my pull-ups, I moved on to my lat pull-downs. So try to get as many repetitions as possible in these two sets. Consider this as a working set. So try to pull yourself as much as possible. For my lat pull downs, I have done four sets of these with 10 repetitions each. I tried different uh, in terms of the length, the width I am going to hold the grip on. I tried different widths. The reason why is because I felt a lot of activation in my forearms on biceps. This is something which I usually feel on this particular equipment. I don't know because of the way it is set up. But I do feel a lot of lat activation. But along with it, my biceps and my forearms do activate a lot. I try to eliminate them as much as possible but unfortunately in this equipment I feel a lot of activation but otherwise take a uh, width which is just medium length you don't have to take it too far wide out or too close just take it medium length as you can see here on my third set I try to go extremely wide to eliminate my bicep activation so my elbows don't bend as much but it really did work much because my forearms were still a lot activated. But I've completed my four sets, 10 repetitions. I took only 45 seconds break in between. Post this exercise, without taking a break, I straight away moved on to my donkey calf races. Two sets, 12 to 15 repetitions with four seconds hold every contraction and stretch. Basically, as you push your heels up, you hold there for four to five seconds. And as you drop them down, you hold there for four to five seconds making sure every repetition is uh, completely eliminating the involvement of your tendons. Usually your tendons kick in 
as you go through this movement really fast and calves get less activated or they only get activated after so many reps but here on rep 2 and 3 itself you should start feeling a good amount of activation in your calf muscles so i have sped up the video a little bit so that i don't bore you with my slow repetitions but make sure you do it in a slow manner take some time it would take you a minute to complete one set here your calf should feel pretty much stretched and pumped up if you don't want to do uh, donkey calf races you can also do seated or standing calf races some or the other calf work and do it in a similar fashion of holding on for four seconds at both stretch and contractions post completing my donkey calf races i immediately moved on to my bicep work wherein i chose to do the incline bench setup curls so in this particular setup you basically lie down on an inclined bench completely flat head down and let your arms stretch out completely beside you with triceps getting activated a little bit once they're at their lowest point and from there you start curling try to not bring your elbows forward as much as possible there will be a little bit movement but don't try to or at least restrict them come from being beside your body keep them always behind your body and from there start curling now I haven't done any progressive overload or drop weight because i had a lot of activation in my biceps so i stuck to one particular weight i took 10 kilo dumbbells and have done five sets of it with 10 repetitions just took 45 seconds or sometimes even 30 seconds break in between and just went out to rep it out you can choose to keep your legs up to you know freely lay back because sometimes when i keep my legs down i'm not able to lay back comfortably so i keep my legs up so that i can lay back completely and let my arms stretch out beside me as much as possible i try to uh, basically activate my tricep every time i go down to get the maximum amount of stretch and from there i pull up and do the curl and do maximum contraction the important part is to get the dumbbell as close to you as as your shoulder as possible for every repetition feel that squeeze and let it go down completely as much as possible so on my fifth set what i have done is after completing my 10 repetitions i have basically moved a little bit back on the bench and let my hands dangle or create a stretch and hold it for about 10 seconds creating that stretch pull on my biceps as you can see i'm just going to do it now after completing my last rep wherein my biceps were completely tired i just move up on the bench and let my hands stretch out with the dumbbells in hand i won't release the dumbbells and hold there for five to ten seconds creating that stretch on my bicep a great way to finish off the incline bench and once done we move on to our shrugs now for shrugs i have done three sets of these 12 repetitions with the same weight make sure you take a challenging weight but don't overload on this exercise because if you overload you won't be shrugging completely as much as you can you would shrug halfway through the cue here is to try to bring your shoulders as close to your ears as possible anatomically you wouldn't be able to touch it but you want to touch it so keep telling yourself to you know pull your shoulders as close to your ears as possible if you're not doing it in front of a mirror if you're doing it in front of a mirror you can obviously see how much you're able to contract if you lift too heavy you wouldn't be able to get the full range of motion i like to do it on a smith machine because it makes my life a little bit easier in terms of the setup and also i can hold it at a wider stance with a barbell also you can hold it a wider stance with dumbbells you can't hold it a bit wide you have to hold it as close as possible because dumbbells will come and stick to your legs so i've done three sets of it try to be as controlled with the weight as much as possible while trying to get the full range of motion i use straps so that again grip strength doesn't compromise my repetitions you can use gloves and straps too post completing this i moved on to my single arm cable rows one of the favorites so basically you go on one knee hold the cable as high as possible make sure the cable is always an intention never rest the cable never let the weight touch the uh, resting weights keep it always in tension feeling the pull in your arm and then start pulling your elbows towards your hip that is the cue you want your elbows to come across your hips as far behind as possible you can also rotate your body a little bit like i am doing here now which need to keep down which need to key up keep up is as per your comfort like i can as you can see here 
the hand which I'm rowing is usually the knee which is up but in my next set I switch to see if there is any kind of difference but there isn't much you feel the same sometimes even even you can have a little bit more free range of motion because the leg is not obstructing the movement the cue is to bring your elbows as close to your or across your hips as much as possible without bending your elbow let the bicep not activate much so here you can see I kept my knee down the side I'm pulling and try to get as much rotation as possible you can touch your lat you can squeeze it to feel the extra bit of feedback you know try to understand how they contract and stretch but make sure the cable is always under tension never let the cable rest completely down every pull try to focus more on your lats your biceps might get a little bit activated as you go towards the end movement or the end squeeze that's absolutely fine try to flare out your elbows as much as possible if not just go through the range of motion your biceps will activate a little bit but that's absolutely fine feel the stretch and the contractions rotate a little bit with every contraction to get that extra bit of squeeze now if you want to do it in a strict way where you don't want to rotate and just squeeze it out that's also absolutely fine i really did not notice much of a difference doing either ways i stick to the part wherein i rotate to get that extra bit of turn and that should be absolutely fine as per me post completing these i have uh, introduced a new core work in my program it's not new in the sense it exists but i just in, uh, incorporated into my program so whenever i incorporate something new in core work i usually do one or two sets only to see how i feel because while doing the particular exercise you might not feel it much but you would feel it after a day or two when your soreness kicks in so these are called side plank raises basically what one elbow down resting you lay down on a uh, floor keep your legs at an elevated level here I chose to put them on a bench but you can also choose to just put them on a little bit of height maybe a step up box is more than sufficient or a soft bosu ball is also fine I chose to go with the bench because it was not really tough I have done 10 repetitions 2 sets each side so basically you keep your elbow down on the floor legs on an elevated bench or a step up box and then you try to get into a straight angle with your hips always keeping straight facing forward what does this do this basically contracts your obliques and stretches them out as you go down the outer obliques contract inner oblique stretch and as you go up the vice versa happens a great way to work your obliques without i you know stressing them out much or without losing your posture much but do them in less quantity if you're doing it for the first time so that you know how much soreness will kick in the next day for my last exercise i did a finisher set of preacher curls because i did not feel my biceps activated much or tired much so i've decided to go with one set 20 to 25 repetitions of preacher curls with a bit of challenging weight nothing heavy absolutely heavy i just picked a 10 kilo uh, fixed weight easy curl barbell and started repping out concentrating on the reps now post completing my workout i did feel a lot of heaviness in my biceps that means i have gotten enough work done and they were sore post one hour so i believe i have done enough amount of work so anything more than this would have overstrained my biceps because of all the pull work which we have done and that's it for the exercises post this we move on to our static stretches where we hold on to a bar at a height comfortable height and then start dropping one side at a time creating a stretch in our lats as you can see clearly in this video how my lats are getting stretched out as i lean one side at a time thank you so much for joining me if you did like the workout and if you were able to get the effectiveness out of the workout like i did please do drop a like if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel i would definitely appreciate a sub any feedback in the comments i would definitely respond again thank you so much make sure you hold your stretches for 20 seconds at least making sure you get that muscle neutral length back in place or you know just after all those contractions you want to just stretch that muscle out to its neutral length that's about it nothing much and ensure less amount of soreness uh, on that note thank you so much again for joining me i will see you in the next video wherein we'll work on our 
chest and triceps again. See you. Have a good day.